that you will do as you promised you said. It's in Christ's name that we ask it. Amen. All right. If you will, let's turn to John chapter 7. I have too many notes for this, but we're going to get through as far as we can. I'll give you all I can. John chapter 7. We'll begin in verse 37, but we're going to skip verse 39. That's what we looked at Sunday morning. And as we're going through this, and hopefully the Lord's teaching us, that's in parenthetical notation. You can take that out and not do any damage to the text. John gave that to us to describe to us what was going on, but we can pull that out and read it clean through. So verse 37 says, John 7, 37, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Verse 40. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, what he just said, said of a truth, this is the prophet. Capital P prophet. They said, of a truth, this is the prophet. Some thought he was the prophet that was mentioned in Deuteronomy 18 when the Lord spoke and said, I will raise up a prophet, capital P, from among their brethren like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command. I said, you know what? I read something one time in the Scriptures, and I think this is it. I'm discerning. What's going on in this world by what God said before, and I think I got a good handle on. That's just cold, dead facts. Mm. Cold, dead facts. And they didn't go on to say that next verse in Deuteronomy 18, 19, and it shall come to pass that whoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require of him. If that don't make you sit up on the edge of the seat, I don't know what will. But saying, well, that's, I think that checks the block of my discernment, my understanding, the way I see things. And I think that's the prophet. They're not speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it goes on. Wedged in between. There's two cold, hard, dead fact checkers in this group. And wedged right in between them is some of the Lord's people. You know that? That happens often, do not it? Verse 41 says, And others said, This is the Christ. Some said, this is the prophet. And they said, this is the Christ. This is the Messiah. This is the anointed one. The Holy One of Israel. This is not just a prophet. You, you think there's going to be a real important prophet coming. This ain't just a prophet. All the prophets are fulfilled in this one. This is the Christ. That's who this is. Verse 41 continues there at the end. It says, but some said, shall Christ come out of Galilee? Hath not the Scripture said that Christ coming of the seed of David and out of the town of Bethlehem where David was? Now they're arguing. <laughs> I know more about the Scripture. That's an absolute horrible way to do it. If somebody says something wrong, to go whip them with Scripture. The Lord teaches people. Our Lord asked some scribes one time. Those that copied the Bible down. Made copies of it. Those lawyers. They knew it inside and out. And he said, what think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? And they said, well, that's David's son. That's the answer to the question, isn't it? Of a fact. Of a cold, dead, lifeless fact. And the Lord hit him with a person. There had to be some understanding that God had to give. And they said, well, if that's David's son, how did David call him Lord? Well, your, your fact checking ain't going to do you no good on that, huh? God's going to have to send a man to preach to you and apply that to your heart. That, the prophet's going to send his prophet to speak his words to the heart of his people. Christ asked that to his disciples. He said, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And some said John the Baptist. Some said Elias. Others said Jeremiah. So one of the prophets. Those are all good things. Those are nice things to say that he is. And he said, but who do you say I am? Who do you, you 
say that I am? Simon Peter answered, said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Not Son of David. He was a Son of David. He's not just a Son of David. He's not just a prophet. He's a Son of God. You're God Almighty. That's who you are. You're the Christ. You're God. The Lord said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood. Men didn't reveal this to you. Learning didn't reveal this to you. Uh, cold dead facts didn't reveal this to you. He said, my Father which is in heaven revealed it to you. Now, he might have used those means, but the means ain't, ain't what's important. It's that, that the Lord spoke to his heart. Verse 43 there. This is three of the responses there to what our Lord said. In verse 43, John 7, 43, So there was a division among the people because of him. There was a division. There was a split. That's how we see things, isn't it? That's what makes us warm and fuzzy on the inside. Well, now we just split a little bit. The proper word is gap. You hear me? Gap. There's a gap between. This wasn't just children arguing about who gets to ride up front. You ever had that happen? I'd, I've done that. I used to argue, like, I want to ride up front, Mom. And she'd always say, the back seat is going the same place the front seat's going, right? We're all in the same car. This is not what's happening. You, uh, you, you, you pay attention to me. This ain't what happened. This is a big gap. This is a big division. You know how big it was? This is what our Lord was speaking when He gave that parable of the rich man and Lazarus. That beggar Lazarus was in the, the bosom of Abraham. And the Lord said, between us, is what He uh, said, Abraham said, between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed. That ought to make us pay attention. That ain't, that ain't the front seat and the back seat. There is a great gulf fixed. There's a gap fixed. What's the cause of this great gap? What's the cause of this great gulf that cannot be crossed? I have this highlighted in my Bible. I have it underlined in my Bible the next three words. Because of Him. Because of Him. Division, a great gulf, hatred, backbiting, spitting, war, killing. Three times dividers on one side against the other. They took up stones to kill him. They picked up stones. Why would they do that? Why would somebody take up stones to kill the Lord? Isaiah said he has no form nor comeliness. When he shall see and there's no beauty that we should desire him. I've been desiring Jesus my whole life. No, you ain't. <laughs> no, you ain't. He was despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. As it were, we hid our faces from Him. Oh, don't look at that. Just ah, let that go. He was despised and we esteemed Him not. What is it to be at war with God? Not to esteem Him. What is it to pick up rocks and try to bash His brains out? To go, eh. It's not esteeming him. That's not kissing the sun, is it? Don't be deceived. Turn over to Matthew 23. Matthew 23. Don't be deceived. A raven can feed on dead things. Religious people can feed on cold facts, on, on theology and on doctrine. And they do feed. And they feed on dead prophets and they feed on God's preachers of old. Watch it. Matthew 23, verse 29. Matthew 23, verse 29. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. We wouldn't have, if we was alive back then, now we wouldn't have killed the prophets. We wouldn't have done that. I heard a man stand up from a pulpit with a tie on one time and a Bible in front of him. He said, if I was there at Calvary, I wouldn't have let him kill Christ. Well, first off, you don't know what that had to accomplish. <laughs> you don't know what that hour was about. And second, you're lying. You're flat lying or you're ignorant <laughs> or both. Don't be swayed to those that brag on the dead preachers and they curse the living. I've seen it happen over and over in my lifetime. Well, they must be good. They like so-and-so. 
one writer said they were building monuments from one generation trying to cover crimes from another generation and the natural mind is still enmity to God. This isn't a new thing. Did you know that? This isn't a new thing. Just because somebody quotes the right things, just because somebody has some right words to say and they know some scriptures, they don't know Him. And it's life and death. There's a great gulf in between. In Moses' day, they hated Moses and they praised Abraham, didn't they? Christ walked this earth. They hated Him and they praised Moses. The apostles, they preached and they belittled them and they had good things to say of Christ, didn't they? Even while he was alive, they went to John the Baptist and said, well, Christ is baptizing all kinds of people. What's wrong with you? <laughs> He's doing good things. And Calvin and Luther and Ulrich Zwingli and John Huss, they were all hated. And the churches during that time, every one of them was being named St. John, St. Mark, St. Matthew, St. Jude, on and on, wasn't it? All oh, those apostles were great men, but not you people, not you people. Fifth year, 75 years ago, God raised up some men after His own heart in this nation to feed His sheep, to call out His elect. And the Southern Baptists got together and they formed the Spurgeon Baptist Association. <laughs> I ain't lying. If Christ were here in our day, in the flesh, would He be treated any different than He was 2,000 years ago? Well, everybody loves Jesus now, don't they? What about my neighbors? My neighbors are good people. They're Christians. Everybody's a Christian. They kill Him. A raven will eat on a dead thing and leave the living alone. <laughs> they'll ignore it, they'll squawk at it, or they'll attack it, but they will not eat the living. They won't go after the living. Why was he hated? Why was there such a division? Because of him. Why is that? Turn over to John chapter 5. There always has been a division, a separation, a gap, dividing, splitting. But it's not over ways of doing things. It's not over doctrine. It's not over really anything else. Well, they pass a plate and we have a box. Well, they, they do the Lord's uh, table only in the evenings because it's a supper. And, well, I ain't going to go to church then. They, they have the Lord's table in the morning. <laughs> that ain't the reason there's a split. It's because of Him. There was a great division, a great gap because of Him. And I want to look at three things. I'll try to be brief with it. There was a division because of Him, because of who He is. The person. The person of who He is. There was a great division because of what He came to do and did do. The work of Him. His work. And a division because of Him. Because natural man is not Him. You ain't God. You ain't holy. All flesh is grass. That's it. He's God. He's holy. He came to do a work and He did it. And we didn't. That's all of Him. Man's nothing. And Christ is high and lifted up. People say, well, that ain't nothing too bad, is it? Religious folks put aside all their differences to hang Christ on a Roman cross and crucify Him. That's why there's division. That's first division. Because of Him, because of the person. And this happens in any generation. Don't matter if it was Old Testament, when Christ walked this earth uh, 300 years ago, or 300 years from now, if God sees fit to keep this earth spinning. It's because of who He is. you got John 5, look at verse 15. The Lord just healed that man at the pool of Bethesda on the Sabbath day. It says in John 5, 15, The man departed. And told the new Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him. Because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. He had broken their laws. But Jesus answered them, My Father worketh hitherto, and I work. We work together. He wouldn't, they knew he wasn't speaking about Joseph. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him. Because not only had he broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. Look over in John 10, just a few pages. We'll see this later, but there in John 8, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And they took up stones 
to cast at him. They took up stones. You can, you can read these scriptures and just be as pious as you can be and, and hum to yourself and a, 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 a old English phrases and all this. And say that they just pick up smooth, beautiful stones to throw at him. Do you know how mad you got to be to pick up a rock to go after somebody? You grab the closest weapon you can to kill. That's what you do. My grandfather was a hard man. And he, he raised his children as God said to raise his children. And you minded him. And his animals minded him. And he had a horse that wouldn't come out of a stall one time. He said, come on, Charlie. And it would not come. That never happened. And he just... And he grabbed the first thing he saw. And there's a claw hammer right on a barrel. And he grabbed that hammer and hit that horse as hard as he could right between the eyes. And that thousand pound horse fell over. <laughs> and he walked back in the house and Mama said, I thought she was going to go out and plow them fields. He said, Charlie wouldn't come out of the barn so I hit him. I think I killed him. <laughs> so he had dinner. He had lunch. Ate it. Then he went back out in the barn and there stood that horse swaying and cross-eyed. He said, Charlie, let's go. And Charlie come out the barn. <laughs> but he got mad. He was angry at that horse. And he picked up the first thing he had. You got John 10 now. This good shepherd, he lays down his life for the sheep. Man can't do it. And the Lord lays down our lives too. Do you know that? He laid down his life and he's the one that lays our life down. The Lord kills and he makes alive. He's the one that appoints the time. John 10 verse 18. He said, No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. And I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. And there was a division, therefore again, among the Jews of these sayings. And many of them said, He hath a devil, and he's mad. Why hear ye him? Why are you listening to this guy? He's crazy. <laughs> he's crazy. They tried stoning him before and he kept walking in between them. And they said, well, let's just uh, have defamation char uh, character witnesses against him. We'll libel and slander and anything we can to put him down. In case there's any confusion as to what he said down in verse 30. John 10, 30 said, I and my Father are one. Then, then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. And Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you for my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? And the Jews answered and said, For a good work we stone thee not. We love you benefits. Those fishes and the biscuits and the, the health and the healing and I don't my hip don't hurt no more. That's wonderful. <laughs> Nobody minds those things, do they? But for blasphemy, because thou, being a man, makest thyself God. There was a division and always will be a division over who Jesus of Nazareth is. He's Almighty God in human flesh. Our old nature hates that. You know why? We have a shot at being a prophet. I could study and study and study, and I could make people think and convince myself I was a prophet. Or you could convince yourself you're a prophet or a prophetess or whatever. We have a shot at being king. Now, it might be a small country. <laughs> There's a chance I could have a coup. I could take that place over or run for office or something. There's a chance I could be a king. I have a shot at being a priest. Now it's going to be man's ordinations and man's titles and man's garments, man's laying on the hands and all that stuff. But I'll have the title. Boy, we love them titles. I'll have that. I could be a prophet. I could be a priest. I could be a king. And all that's antichrist. Did you know that? Man seeking that for themselves is antichrist. Man's his own prophet. Man's his own priest and man is his own king. But the reason they get mad is because he's God. You can't be God. You have a, a chance at pretending everything else. But he's saying he's something I know I can't be. I can't even make it look like it. There's a division because of who he is. And second, there's a great division and hatred of the Lord Jesus Christ because of his work. Because of what he did. Turn over to Luke chapter 4. Luke 4. We'll see the response and then see the cause. <laughs> Luke 4, verse 28. This ought to hit us too. Luke 4, 28. And all they in the bar room. Oh, I know what it says. All they in the house of ill repute. All they in the marijuana store. 
Nope. All they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him to the brow of the hill whereon the city was built that they might cast him down headlong. What did Christ say that made these churchgoers, these people that were keeping the Sabbath, these people, they were going to church on Sunday, Saturday, their regularly scheduled time. What made these people want to kill him? What made him want to cast him out of the city, run him out of town, and throw him off a cliff and so he'd land on his head? He stood up and read the Scriptures. Look up in verse 25. And he said, But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up for three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land, but unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, a Gentile city, unto a woman that was a widow. He said, remember that time that there's all kinds of widows in Israel. Heavens were shut up. And God's prophet was sent to an old Gentile woman. And, verse 27, and many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisu, the prophet, <clears throat> and none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman the Syrian. Naaman the Gentile. What's our Lord saying? Salvation's not in your ceremonies. It's not in your physical activity. It's not in your pomp and circumstance. It's not in you playing religion. It's not in your birth. It's not in your anything. Salvation's of God alone. He came to seek and to save the lost. The great physician came to heal the sick. Those ones that need a physician. We read that in Exodus. Moses called out to him and said, I beseech you, Lord, show me your glory. And he said, I will make my goodness pass before thee. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. Almighty God says, I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. I had a privileged youth. I grew up in a lot of different ways than other people would say I had a privileged youth. <laughs> I think I had a privileged youth because I grew up with parents that told me that God didn't owe me anything. I didn't get pat on my head and get pumped religion into my veins. They said, God don't owe you nothing. The Lord doesn't owe us grace. He doesn't owe man mercy. He doesn't owe life to man outside of His Son. He doesn't owe eternal glory and life to somebody outside of His Son. The only thing we're owed is what we earned, our wages. And the wages of sin is death. You know what right you have? In this country, do you know what right you have? You got the right to take one more breath and meet a holy God you offended. That's it. That Constitution is a piece of paper. It can burn and can be gone tonight. It can go whenever the sun goes down. It don't matter. We are dying men and women about to meet a holy God. And outside of His Son, you're in an eternity of trouble. Almighty God must be just. But He may be gracious. Almighty God must punish sin. But He may be merciful. If He's gracious, it'll be to whom He will. And if He's merciful, it'll be to whomever it pleases Him to be merciful to. None of us deserve or have merited grace. We haven't deserved or merited mercy or salvation. It's the gift of God. And it's only found in our substitute. Who was He? What, what was the division? He's God. What did He do? Come to save His people. Be, be their substitute. You get a hold of that. Think about that. If I had to have a stand-in, <laughs> if I had to have one take my place, do I want somebody mediocre? That ain't important to some people. It is to me. Because it's important to the Almighty God that sent Him. Paul told us, he said, We know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who will be called according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom He did predestinate, them He also called. And whom He called, He justified. 
And we justified, He glorified. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, if He's been gracious, if He's been merciful, if He's given us His Son, who can be against us? He that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It's God that justifies. What Christ was saying to those people is God doesn't know you anything. And that made them mad enough to cast Him headlong off a cliff. They were born of good stock. They were religious. They prayed out loud before every meal. Did you know that? They didn't care if it was in public. They were good little Christians. They played, prayed out loud. I bet it prayed like this. God, I thank Thee that I'm not as other men extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. He came to seek and to save the lost. Which way do people divide on that? Are you saying that I'm lost? Or, amen. He did. He came to seek and save the lost. I was lost. Now I'm found. I'm going to stay that way. Because he found me, that's why. He came to give sight to the blind. What did those Pharisees say? You say we're blind? Or amen. He came to give ears to the deaf. You say I'm deaf? I've listened to a thousand sermons. I listen to 14 messages a day. You say I'm deaf? Or do you say amen? He came to give tongues to the dumb. I've been telling everybody about God my whole life. Or amen. Amen. I didn't even know who to tell of until he came to me. You see, there's two sides to every fence. You can't sleep on a fence. Did you know that? You ever tried it? Somebody have hand packed means, well, you can put board sideways. You can't sleep on a fence. You're going to fall off. You're going to land on one side or the other. And let me tell you something. You're going to go into the grave and you ain't going to sleep on that fence. And that made people mad enough to kill him over it. The blood of the martyrs. You can read all the books you want about these old martyrs and stuff. Who killed them? Was it governments? Was it the military? Church going folks did, didn't they? First says a division because of him, because of who he was, his person in any generation. That's primary. Then there was a great division and hatred over the Son of God's work. What he accomplished at Calvary. What he came to accomplish. And third, man is not God. Man cannot be God. Man cannot save himself. And man will not save themselves. Not on God's terms. Do you know that? We'll do it on our terms. Lord, don't be in the way we want it. We're at war with God and we're children of the devil outside of Him. Outside of Christ. That's, some, that's a bold statement, isn't it? You're either a child of God or you're a child of Satan. There's a big gap, <laughs> big division in between. It's one or the other. There's a division over that. But it's not a technicality. What's the reason to that? Because of Him. Because of Him. Because of the Word of God against sin. That's what mankind threw out. You, all the problems in the news is because man don't believe God. They're going to face a holy God. They know it and they can't stand it. And they stick pacifiers and every everybody's mouth and tries to make everything okay. And it ain't going to be okay. Come Monday, everything ain't going to be all right. <laughs> Turn over to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. <clears throat> John eight fifty eight. John 8 verse 58 says, Jesus said unto them, Barely, barely, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And they took up stones to cast at him. What all did he say? He said, I am. But he said something else too, didn't he? Look up verse 39. John 8, 39. They answered and said unto him, Abraham's our father. <laughs> they called on somebody that was dead and gone to the one that was right in front of them. Abraham's our father. Jesus said unto them, If Abraham's if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But now you seek to kill me. 
a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. <laughs> Abraham did not seek to divide. Abraham did not seek to kill God's messenger. You do the deeds of your father. And they saith unto him, We be not born of fornication. What's that mean? I, want, I wasn't conceived in sin. I'm not a child of Adam. I'm not that bad. I didn't come into this world that bad. We have one Father, God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your Father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but He sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you cannot hear my word. You are of your father, the devil. This isn't some radical preacher getting up, trying to get shocked by you. This is Almighty God speaking in the flesh to people that's against him. And the lust of your fathers you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there was no truth in him. When he spake a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he's a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Which of you convinceth me of sin? If I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. That's as clear cut and plain and as bold and as brutal as it can be. And that's as comforting to a child of God as it ever could be because I'm in Him. You're, pit, you're painted in a corner. You're pigeonholed. Ain't, you ain't got a leg to stand on. Cry to Him. The child of God will say, Save, Lord. <laughs> Come to me. I don't, I don't know everything. I don't know how it all works. I just know you and I need you. They'll cry to Him, won't they? Those in unbelief and rebellion are not the children of God. They're the children of wrath. Life hasn't been given to them yet. It's that clear cut. It's that plain. But for you that see Him as who He is and you say, Amen. And you see the work that only He could accomplish and that's completely finished. It's done. And you say, Amen. And His Word says, All flesh is grass. There's none good. No, not one. You say, You're right, Lord. Amen. Paul wrote to us in Ephesians 2 and he said, And you hath He quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. <laughs> he was dead. You couldn't hear, you couldn't see, you couldn't talk. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom we also, we all, <laughs> had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature, were by nature, children of wrath even as others. I ain't no different than anybody else. I was conceived in sin. I've, I've done it from the moment I come out of the womb. I lied. I cried when I didn't have a wet diaper. I cried when I wasn't hungry. Just so mom picked me up. That's lying from the womb. That's offensive to our nature. They hated Christ saying He was God. They hated Him saying that He and He alone could save His elect. They hated Paul for saying it. They hated God's preachers throughout time for saying it. And I may have one or two people that just ain't a fan of me. <laughs> Should I be surprised? Our Lord said, if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Why does there a division? Why would somebody be mad at me? Why would somebody not defend me and go defend somebody else? Because of Him. That's true. Why did those disciples, those ever learning ones, not his true disciples at the end of John 6, why did they leave him? They walked with him no more. They up and left because he spent that whole chapter. We just went through it. He taught he was the bread of life. His body must be broken. His blood must be shed for the remission of sins. And in order to have eternal life, you must take this person to yourself. You must consume him. And you don't have to need him. You don't have to thirst for him and hunger for him. Not thirst for a doctrine, not eat a, a teaching. Not just the right gospel facts, but a person. A person. That's who saves. Peter had a handle on Isaiah 40. And that prophet said, Lord, what am I going to cry? What do I tell these people? He said, all flesh is grass. Here's what Peter said. For all 
flesh is grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of grass that withereth, the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. Christ endures forever. His words endure forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Well, first division. People won't hear it. Or they'll be affable at best. They'll, they'll take it or leave it. That's oh, okay. Well, Kevin didn't drink too much water and he didn't fumble through his notes too bad. And his points were real clear. That's on that side of the fence. Isn't that good news? <laughs> the Lord sent someone to preach the gospel to us. We're grass. God came in human flesh, made like we are. He was born of a woman. He had mitochondrial DNA. That's necessary. He was made underneath the law. <laughs> Fulfilled it as a substitute of His people. And He willingly laid down His life. He sacrificed Himself for those that hated Him. And that sacrifice was accepted. It's done. <laughs> Paid in full. It's finished. All that's because the Father purposed it, the Son purchased it, and now the Holy Ghost comes to His people in power and proclaims it in their hearts. Those that He sought out. Those that He loved before time. And has always loved and shall always love. Mankind will either get fully humble and rejoice hearing that. You bite it. Amen, Lord, thank you. <laughs> you ain't going to jump up and down, wave your arms and shut, put, cut a big shine so everybody can see you. You'll stick your head down and say, hey, Amen, thank you, Lord. Thank you. That's right. That's who you are, what you've done, who I am. Hey, that's right. Or you'll be on the other side of the fence. Any other response? Ignoring it. Picking up stones. You kill him. We will not have this man reign over us. If I get stoned to death, he's worth it. I, I don't want, it's going to hurt. That's all right. <laughs> That's all right. I can, I can handle that for a little bit. If I get stoned, he is worth it. A child of God's desire is unity, not division. There will be division. I had several more pages of notes. I won't get to them. I went too far. There'll be divisions among you. Paul said that to Corinth right before he told him how to take the Lord's table. And he said, first of all, when you come together in church, I hear that there's divisions among you, and I partly believe it. And he gave him some instructions. He said, there must be heresies among you. There must be. We clean up. I, I can go through and just chop down all the weeds and pluck them all and get them all out of here. And there must be. There must be heresies among you. Why? First John 2 says, They went out from us, but they were not of us. If they had been of us, they would have no doubt spent a couple minutes with no, they would have continued with us. Hopefully we'll look at this again next time. But yeah, a child of God don't desire division. We hate it. Now we're going to be accustomed to it and we'll have to deal with it. But that's not what we want, isn't it? Those people that, that are wrong... They're just flat wrong. And they're lying on God and they're at war with Him and they don't even know it. I don't want to go out and just kick them. Oh, I pray the Lord gives you a new heart. He teaches you and gives you understanding. I hope, hope He wakes you up to it. That's what we pray. Why? Because we seek unity. We want to dwell in the house of the Lord together. <laughs> Worship Him together, don't we? I would that all men would be saved. Amen. Father, thank You for this time. Lord, thank You for... Your perfect Word. Thank You for Your perfect Son. Lord, allow us to bow to Him and be thankful for what You've provided us in Him. How grateful we are, Lord. Don't let us take, take it for granted. And we so often do. Don't let us take for granted Christ's blood. Whose blood that was. What it accomplished on that mountain. Lord, keep Him in our minds. Show us, teach us what we ought to be grateful for. Teach us how to pray. Lord, teach us how to love. Teach us how to be tender, and long-suffering, kind one to another. Forgive us for what we are. It's in Christ's name that we ask it. Amen.